Hi there, I'm Sapper Woody, and it has been a long time since I've made a video for my channel. I've wanted to do a video kind of like this for a while, but just haven't gotten to it. And, and uh, I actually suggested that someone else do this video, which is a reaction to uh, the song Hero of War by Rise Against. But then I thought, why don't I do it? For those of you who don't know, I do have a degree in music. And I was a, uh, well, I am a veteran. I was deployed to Iraq for 12 months and Afghanistan for 13 months. And as you can see by my hat, I was a combat engineer. My job was to do route clearance. Uh, so we were driving in front of convoys to uh, search for IEDs to clear the route for people behind us. Uh, we would go uh, make sure it was okay for uh for the marines to go through or the rangers or uh, other army or or you know different different things which always cracks me up because everyone likes to say you know we're you know lead the way or whatever but we were the ones who cleared the way for those who could lead the way but uh, so i'm i'm going to do a uh reaction video to rise against hero of war um i have heard this song before uh, it was introduced to me actually back when I was deployed to Iraq. A guy used to listen to it. And when I first heard it, I, it sounded very anti-military to me, and I didn't like it. But then uh, the more I listened to it, the more I was like, okay, it's not anti-military, it's anti-war. And I, I believe that to be anti-war is okay. I am anti-war myself. Uh, I do not want wars to happen. I do believe that they are uh, necessary sometimes. However, I do not want them. <clears throat> We're going to try this. I have heard it before. Now, I will say for those of you out there, this does have some um, does have some some very tough uh, situations in it, um, and uh, it, it it's not a, a song or video for the faint of heart. But we're gonna we're gonna try to jump into it now, and uh, there we go. That's working. I've got this on my other screen, and so let's just let's just start watching. I'll pause it and we'll we'll discuss it. You know, right two seconds into the video, I'm bringing it back to this. Let's talk about this setting, right? This is this is the perfect opener to this song. He's sitting there. It's just a guitar, just he and his guitar. Um, and we notice this, uh, we notice this playground. It's supposed to be filled with joyful kids, but it's not. It's, it's empty and abandoned. He's the only one there just sitting with his guitar. Uh, reminds me, in fact, that guitar, it's probably not the same brand because mine was just a, literally I bought it for $50 back in uh, 2010. But uh, I had a guitar that looked just like that with me in Afghanistan. And several of us, when we had, had our downtime, we'd sit down and I'd play the guitar and we'd just, um, you know, sing with it. But that, that the opening imagery, so simple and great. And that's it's accompanied by this simple guitar do 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 and it's just so simple yet it just says so much even right in the opening let's 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 back that up and i'm gonna try to get farther than two seconds in this time he said son have you seen the world well what would you say if i said that you could just carry this gun, you'll even get paid. I said that sounds pretty good. Okay, so <clears throat> the the stereotype is that uh, recruiters um, will do anything they can to to get people in. You know, would you like to see the world? Well, just carry this gun, you'll get paid. You'll you'll see the world. And I can't speak to the practices of every recruiter, obviously. Um, the only recruiters, I, I only had uh, interactions with just a few recruiters myself, obviously the ones who recruited me. Um, and then I went to what was called hometown recruiting uh, in between my basic, or actually after graduating AIT and before going to my first duty station. And I was there, went to my hometown for a couple weeks, but I spent very little time with the recruiters there because um, my wife was pregnant and uh, she actually had our first child in between me graduating uh, from training and going to my first duty station. And uh, so I've spent time there, but then I've, I've, I've interacted with other recruiters and 
the recruiters that I know of lamented how much pressure there was on them to recruit. And I was told, I can't, I, I haven't looked this up to corroborate this, but I was told that the pressure has been lessened a lot, especially since uh, towards the uh, towards the end of my time, which I, I've been out for almost 10 years now, but towards the end of my time, there was actually a downsizing in the military. And so we weren't really trying to draw people in as much. Um, <clears throat> in fact, we were, we were offering people early retirements and, um, being very selective about who we let stay in. So I've heard that the recruiters, they don't have nearly as much pressure on them as they do anymore. Like if, if you don't make so many numbers this this month, you're going to be in trouble kind of thing. Um, with that being said, I actually contacted the recruiters. Uh, I was I was 20, uh, well, at the time when I first contacted them, I was 23 years old, I believe. Uh, and then I was 24 by the time I went to training. But I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to join the Army. Um, I had done other things, um, and that's what I wanted to do. So I actually contacted them, and it wasn't, from my experience, it wasn't a high-pressure thing. It was, okay, this is what you want to do. Well, here's what you got to do to join the Army. But there is that trope. Now, they've got these uh, images interspersed. Um, and, of course, these are, you know, made by someone who, uh, or the, the video is made by someone who... Um, really knows how to pull on people's emotions. So we've got these flashes here um, to to this this here. I mean, this evokes an emotional response in me, but probably not for the same reason. We got this here. Um, this appears to be, um, you know, guys stacking on the wall. Um, some powerful imagery. I mean, very likely this, you know, wasn't live footage. This is probably either filmed for the movie um, or in training, obviously. Uh, it's not something. Let's just go back to that, actually. If I said that you could just carry this gun, you'll even get paid. I said that sounds pretty good. Black leather boots, spit shine so bright. Let's stop that there. So black leather boots, for the Army anyway, I uh, can't speak to the other services. I think they've also moved away. But the black leather boots, actually, they moved away from that um, right before I joined. So all the way back in, I don't know when this when this song came out. But they moved away from that uh, in uh, 2006, 2007, and went with the, uh, the, the tan-colored boots, which mine were always red because I was in Hawaii with the red mud. And so they, they were stained red. There's nothing you could do about it. Um, but they went to the tan boots and away from the, uh, the BDUs, the, the battle dress uniform to the, uh, to the, uh, different, different things. Now it's even different now. Now it's, uh, I believe OCPU, um, is what they call it now. But then, yeah, then we go right here and he's about to talk about this, getting your, cut off my hair, but it looks all right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my experience with that was sitting in a barber. Uh, chair and he had a, a shop vac attached to his clippers and he just as quickly as he could cut off hair because he he got through like uh, 50 guys in 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 just a matter of like a half hour you sat in there you literally had 30 seconds or so just and they didn't do a very good job because they didn't have to they didn't care so you'd go back to the barracks and you'd have like one little long hair sticking out you'd have to pull and have your battle buddies police you and take care of that they cut off my hair but it looks all right. We march down we sing. But so these these scenes here, they're foreshadowing. Let's see if I can find that here. Yeah, these are foreshadowing um, events. You know, they don't have anything to do with what he's saying yet. Um, but it, it's foreshadowing of, of what's coming. The 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 trauma that this uh, individual is is reliving. Um, you know. Uh, well, I, th I think we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But yeah, it's it's trauma that they're and that's what this is flashing back to. This person unable to let go of what happened. But we'll we'll, we'll get to that more, I'm sure. Now we sang, we all became friends as we learned how to fight. Oh man, I wish, <laughs> I wish that. Where I was looked that nice. <laughs> we we had uh, 
of course, in our main areas, our, our main areas that were more permanent, they, they looked a lot nicer. But a lot of my missions were run, and we just, and I forget what they're called now, but they're just big old uh, bags that you fill with dirt. I mean, they're huge. Uh, they're like, I want to say, two meters by two meters by two meters, and you just fill it with dirt, and that becomes your walls. Um, and that was that was what separated you from the outside. A hero of war Yeah, that's what I'll be And when I come home They'll be damn proud of me I'll carry this flag To the grave if I must Cause it's a flag I, Okay, I, I was just gonna let this go, but Let's go. Let's go back here. Um, let's, let's find, there we go. Yeah, we got the, the kids playing soccer. That's something that we actually got a chance to do. That was fun. Um, during one mission, we had a uh, our buffalo. It, it's a really big truck with this arm on it. Our buffalo uh, caught fire, and we were stuck in the middle of a village for two and a half, three hours. And uh, so we got our mechanics on that. We got the fire put out, obviously. Um, and we, we got our mechanics on that, and while they were doing it, it took us forever to get that fixed where the buffalo could move again. And the town had a small school in it, and as we were out there, the, the kids ended up dismissing from school, and they came. So they, I was tasked with taking our interpreter, because I didn't, I didn't uh, speak um, the language of the, the, uh, that they speak in Afghanistan. I, I spoke a little bit of Farsi, a little bit, uh, but... Uh, you know, I couldn't really communicate, so I took my interpreter with with me, and and I kept the kids busy during that, and so I I, I gave out some candy and 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 talked to them a little bit, and and uh, soccer uh, was one of the things we uh, we did with the kids there. I'm no good at soccer, especially not when I'm wearing sixty pounds of full battle rattle, and incidentally, one of the kids stole a shotgun shell from me that was on my because I carried my uh, M4 and I carried a Mossberg 500 shotgun, and uh, my shotgun shells were on the outside of 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 my of my stuff, and I, one of the kids got close enough to steal it without me noticing until I was back in the truck. Fortunately, I was able to retrieve that. The only flag I love, the only flag I trust. Now, this is obviously setting up. A turnaround later but when people say this okay you, you join the army for many reasons or you know and, and I say the army I mean I mean the military in general army was what I joined but when you joined the military Marines Air Force um, Navy and uh, even the Coast Guard we give them a lot of flack but you know even the Coast Guard you join for you know, whatever your personal reason is, okay, um, a lot of it is patriotism and, and wanting to serve your country. And that is your initial driving motivator is to serve your country. And, you know, he said, you know, when I come home, they'll be so proud of me, you know, and that, that plays into it too, you know. You like to be seen as a soldier, and, and you'd like, I mean, obviously, who doesn't like prestige and things that come with that? But when you actually become a soldier or a Marine, and again, I'm not trying to leave anybody out, your motivator, it, it changes. It, it becomes about those around you. Um, you know, my brothers are, are fighting. I want to I wanna go fight, too. And... Um, and I think that's part of the issues that soldiers have is they put a lot of weight on themselves. Um, they they have this idea that if they're out there, I need to be there. And yet, why? Because I do. Because I can make the... They will die without me. I mean, things literally said by Marines and, and soldiers, I know, and maybe the other branches, but they will die without me. I can protect them. I can keep them safe. And they put all this weight on themselves. And so when something happens, they it becomes about them. It becomes about, I should have been there. I, I should have protected my battle buddy. Um, so I'm, I'm kidding. 
I'm getting way off track, but that, so yeah, that is the initial reason for joining usually is patriotism, but then it becomes something much deeper than that. I kicked in the door, I yelled my commands, the children they cried, but I got my hand, we took him away, a bag over his face, from his family and his friends. So, <clears throat> that's not an inaccurate portrayal of what happens in that kind of situation um when you when you go kicking in doors usually now well i say usually usually for what we did when you kicked in doors it was to gain a high value target it wasn't you weren't there to try to kill anybody that happened because of things but you you wanted to get this high value target um they they had intel on what was going on. Maybe they were connected to somebody else. Uh, you uh, keeping a um, you know keeping a, a log of who is connected. Maybe they know about upcoming attacks. Maybe and uh, so that's why you're there. And you, you know you do put a bag over their face. Um, that's so they you know for many reasons, many reasons. Um, and I will say the intent there is not to humiliate them. Although I, I I imagine that has to be part of it, um, but there is a certain separation that has to go into being a person who does that kind of thing um, and into getting these targets. The key there is to be able to do that job and still see these people as people, and that's hard to do. It is, it's. It's very hard to do to still see these people as people. Um, I'm, so now I will say this next part, obviously something very bad is about to happen here. Um, and I will preface it by I personally never saw anything like what he's about to describe. I, I never saw anybody doing this. Um, I would like to um, believe that if I had, I would have stepped in to stop it. However, I was never in that position. I, I, you know, I can't sit here and say, this is what I'd have done because I wasn't there. And unfortunately, I would also like to say this has never happened, but I know it has. Um, but fortunately, I never saw it happen or had to deal with this. So let's continue here. They took off his clothes, they pissed in his hands. I told them to stop, but then I joined in. We beat him with guns and batons, not just once, but again and again. Now, I'm going to point out something musically here. What, what I love about this song is, again, its simplicity. It has a message to deliver, and it doesn't want to detract from that message by an overly complicated uh, arrangement or even instrumentation. So far, um, I mean, we're at we're at just simple guitar here. I believe it's been that with you the whole uh, thing so far. I don't remember it being anything but the guitar right now, and I do think it picks up later. But right now, it's just hey, this is this is just retelling of a story. <clears throat> um, so musically, this song is genius in its simplicity it's just strumming on a guitar with a not even really any guitar licks or fill-ins the the licks or fill-ins are really just some chord changes they're strumming and i think that is really playing into the strength especially when you add the visuals and everything because you don't want it taking away from what you are hearing and what you are seeing So you can hear the drums coming in there, kind of adding that emphasis, and that, but they're so subtle. I love it. 
um, and then it goes back to this because they're they're getting ready to hit a powerful part of the song, and you know, and so the the music is done perfectly for this song, in my opinion. Uh, I, I think it's done well, but of course we went back through that chorus. You know, hero of war, that's what I'll be. When I come home, they'll be so proud of me. I'll carry this flag. Of course, he's still talking about the American flag. I'll carry this flag to the to the grave if I must, because it's the flag that I love the the flag that I trust. And then we go into this. She walked through bullets and haze. I asked her to stop. I begged her to stay. But she pressed on. So I lifted my gun. And I fired away. Okay, so it's, it's building here, but I, I wanted to talk about that, that scenario. That, that is an unfortunate scenario. It really is. But it's real. It, it really is real. When you're set up, and now the, let me paint you kind of the situation here. You're not just going to fire up on someone for getting close to you normally. But there are times where you have to court on the area and keep people away. Um, if you're in a high danger area, you've just been attacked, um, or you're setting up for the night, you cordon off an area and you keep anybody away from you because the unfortunate reality of this was that we were not fighting a symmetrical war. It was actually called an asymmetrical war. And you didn't know who the enemy was. You could be talking to a guy one day and, and you know, the next day he's, he's planting a bomb to try to blow you up. You just didn't know. And I will say this, the vast majority of the people in, in both Iraq and Afghanistan, the vast majority just wanted to live their lives. Um, you know, some sides try to paint us as the, the liberating heroes. Um, some sides try to paint us as the invading conquerors and, and everything in between. But the vast majority of those people just wanted to live their lives. And in Afghanistan especially, um, you know, our presence or in some ways our presence caused them harm and in some ways it made their life a lot easier. Um, they, uh, you know, some of them begged us not to leave because they were afraid that having been seen talking to us, the, uh, the Taliban, it was Taliban back then, now we're talking more about ISIS, but the Taliban would come in and take them just for talking to us. So in that way, we made their lives worse by being there and them talking to us. However, once that was established, our absence would have been bad for them. Um, and, uh, but this, this scenario in particular, you setting off a cordon. Again, you don't know who you're fighting. And I've, um, I've seen instances where someone seemingly innocent had a suicide vest on. And that's just, I mean, that, that is unfortunate, but it's a reality. And they, um, so you don't know. And they, they were known to use men, women, and children. And so our ROE, our rules of engagement, were if they're approaching where they shouldn't be, you yell at them to stop. Shout, show, shove, shoot, shoot, okay? Shout to them, um you know, and tell them that you, you know, don't come any closer. Show, show that you're willing, point your gun at them. Okay. Um, if it point that you're, you, that you will have to shoot them if they get any closer. Um, shove is more in a really close, can you push people away if you have to? Um, but then shoot, shoot a warning shot if it's practical to do so. You know, obviously you don't want to shoot them right away. Maybe they don't see you know, maybe they don't hear you shouting, maybe it's, but they will notice a gunshot. And then the rules of engagement, as stated, say if that, at that point, they do not stop, they have decided to face what comes next. And they're written that way on purpose because they don't want us thinking, I shot someone coming towards me. 
they want us thinking they decided to get shot. They have escalated the force. They have decided to risk being killed. Not we shot them, we killed them. They decided. And in, in some ways, that's the case. Um, you know, sometimes that is the case. You got a, a bomber trying to get to you. You know, they're deciding to cross that line to, to keep coming no matter what happens. Um, but the word, but so the idea is to put the onus on, give them all the warnings you can so that if they are innocent, they'll stop. Um, and you have no choice because it's at that point you're risking your life. You have no choice but to take out the ones who keep coming. And unfortunately that, that's just a reality of things. Let's, let's go back here and let, let's listen to that part again. Now they, every time they, they say she, they're showing a little girl on screen. Um, in my, in my mind's eye though, I'm, I'm seeing a, a grown woman, but let's, let's go back to this here. She walked through bullets and haze. I asked her to stop. I begged her to stay. But she pressed on. So I lifted my gun and I fired away. So yeah, that's that's heavy. It's uh, some heavy, heavy content. <clears throat> I mean, it's the unfortunate thing that's happened. Of course, the they don't really talk about the trauma there in the song, but the, they're they're showing. If you notice, a lot of the through that last verse and chorus, a lot of the flashback they happen fast, but it's everything we've seen up to this point. It's amazing how when you're put in that type of situation, how, how quickly your mind works. But it's also, I think, representative of the flashbacks of the person going through all this uh, later on. The one we keep seeing in the night vision. And uh, <laughs> musically, musically, the, the music swelling there. And I'm going to go back and play it again. But musically, the music's swelling there, and it's amazing. But um, it really wants to drive home a hero of war, you know. Is that what I'll be? <laughs> Just medals and scars. It's, am <clears throat> it's amazing how it changed from, you know, the first part. A hero of war, the, that's what I'll be, and when I come home, they'll be so proud of me. But now it's a hero of war. Is that what they see? Just medals and scars. Because, uh, you know, your average person isn't going to see what's going on beneath. And <clears throat> like what this person's in the video portion of it, what this person's going through. Unfortunately, that's that's a reality for for many people, and uh, I want I want to talk a little bit more about that later. Um, I know the video is going long. I only intended it to be about 10, 15 minutes, but let's go back and let's listen to that that chorus again here. Blood now has soaked. She collapsed with a flag in her hand. A flag white as snow. Now the music swells right here. Just metals and scars. So damn proud of me. 
So yeah, that's a uh, that's that's some heavy content. It's a heavy song, and uh, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, again the, the 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 song itself didn't really go through. This, the video really did. The video really showed the idea of soldiers reliving all this, uh, and again, soldiers, Marines, airmen, where everybody that that seen something like this. And the video said a lot without words as well. Um, I think it was very well done. Um, I, I do think there were <laughs> they got their point across. Uh, let's say that I, I I don't really have anything bad to say about it. There were some things that uh, in there you know that did not apply to like my circumstances, but you know maybe it applied to other people's uh, circumstances. Um, and, uh, but one thing I want to say, and I'm, I'm going to close this video out. If, whether you're a soldier, Marine, any, any, whatever, or whether you're a civilian, if, if you are having, uh, mental issues like what was shown in this video, please, please, please get some help. Um, and for those who may be watching this, who know how to get a hold of me, um, you know, feel, feel free to, um, I saw a t-shirt that said, I would rather hear about your battles than learn you lost the war. And I want to get that t-shirt. It, you know. So please get some help and if, if you need it. And uh, anyway, this was some heavy subject material. The video is much longer than I wanted it to be. But if you've made it this far, uh, thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more uh, videos like this, I didn't really go into it musically, which was my intent. I think the, the the soldier aspect of it spoke to me more than the, the music did. But uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this or, or other songs, you know, and I'd like to start breaking down songs musically, um, let me know. And uh, I'm Sapper Woody.